But anyway, we have these 13,000 collisions. Where are the hotspots? That would be a question that I'm really interested in because then if we know where the hotspots are, we can send out, we can send Caltrans and DOT out there and work on the intersection or the roadway, try to see if there's an engineering solution. We can send law enforcement out there, try to see if there's a law enforcement solution. We can even look into an education solution. Like one of the hotspots we see in the LA Bike Map project is that all around USC there's a ton of accidents, like in the immediate vicinity of USC. There's also this generalized hotspot where I, would, I guess the workforce I was in, but right around USC and the frats, you know, there's some, all this, um, these cycling accidents. So maybe that's an opportunity for an educational solution. Do you so, think that that's the potential of law enforcement that's specifically focused around USC? Say, can you can you just rephrase that or around USC uh, there's an increase in law enforcement because of the school uh, that therefore by there being more active law enforcement then it's a higher propensity for that law enforcement to do to file a report where in another area they may not necessarily file a report. I mean it's a good it's a that that could be what's going on that they're more likely to file a report. Also I mean if you've ever ridden down there it's like everybody and their mother has a beach cruiser like all the all the students have beach so it's not like you at UCLA where it's hilly and you may as well just walk. It's a little bit wider and so and it's flat. It's probably both. So anyway, um, yeah, they're like, <coughs> you've got to make sure that mommy and daddy have a report file. Right. So um, just as a comparison, like let's let's say we looked at all that data. We have 13,000 data points. It's a lot of data. Uh, in social sciences, that's way more data than you uh, so let's, typically, so like let's look at two intersections that I'm really familiar with on the west side, Venice and Sentinel and Venice and Sepulveda. Venice and Sepulveda and Venice and Sentinel are monster intersections. Um, the only one really in that area that's bigger would be Venice and Lincoln, which is bigger than both, but that's just a gigantic intersection. But these are big intersections, and so they're the kinds of places where if there's cycling accidents happening, you really need to take a serious look at it. And it's like one of those intersections where you're like, it's like hard to get over to the left turn and right. Um, but Venice and Sepulveda is a little bit bigger too. So let's see how many, act, let's take that all that data, those 13,000 data points, and let's look and see which intersection really needs more attention than the other, or, or <coughs> no distinction. So Venice and Sentinel had seven collisions in six years, and Venice and Sepulveda had six collisions in the immediate vicinity of it. So to me that says, there, there, first of all, there's no clear distinction, but what it really says to me as a, as, a, as a statistician, as a scientist, that's not a lot of data for those intersections. That's less than a collision a year. So even though we have 13,000 data points, we're getting 1,400 collisions, which sounds like a lot each year to sort of isolate the problem spots. That's divided over 6,300 miles of roadway. And there's gotta be an intersection on average every third of a mile or every quarter of a mile. So there's tens of thousands of intersections in LA. So when you take all that data and divide it across all those intersections, you don't have enough data to make distinctions, to figure out what <coughs> distinctions are important. Like if we threw Venice and Lincoln up here, maybe Venice and Lincoln would say 10 collisions. It's not clear what intersections are bad. And, and to complicate the situation, Venice and Sentinella used to not have a left turn signal, right? So. And then in the last two years, LADOT went and added a left turn signal at the request of the neighborhood. So that 10 years of data is really talking about two different intersections. Venice and Sentinel before the left turn signal, and Venice and Sentinel after the left turn signal. So we have a problem that there's not enough data, right? And we have a problem that this data is spread out over time, and these, these locations are changing, right? So what, can we, what, what are possible solutions to this? So one. One approach is, is to catalog and, and document near misses, right? So everybody who rides in this room, think about how many times you've actually had a collision. And then think about how many times you've reported that collision. I've had, I think, eight or nine collisions or falls. I would include falls in that category in the last six or seven years of my career. But I, only, I didn't report any of those to LAPD or any law enforcement <coughs> agency, right? But had, I, I would say that every week that you do a lot of writing, and certainly every month, there's a near miss. You have you have something where it's like that person started to right hook you and you, you grab the brakes a little bit, you know. On top of near misses, I don't know what you want to call it, but you 
call it near near misses, there's times when cars will take the right of way away from you, right? So you'll have the right of way and you'll be owning the lane <coughs> and you'll see that the car is putting on a turn signal and they're just moving into your lane. And what do you do? You just hit the brakes a little bit or you stop pedaling. So it's not a near miss, you didn't nearly die, right? But you, the reason it's not a near miss is because you yielded the right of way to somebody that took it away from you who probably was unaware that you were there, right? So near, near, near misses and I don't know if you want to call them near, near misses, right? There's a lot more of those when there are collisions. So it's sort of like uh, preventative medicine. Like if we start looking at where the near misses are and where the near near misses are, then we can start to treat those intersections or treat those sections of roadway before collisions start piling up there. So that's what LA bike map is. I guess this is, I should have been on this slide. Near, near misses is greater than collisions, right? And, um, and in mass speak, we would say uh, near misses two greater than symbols of the collisions. That means it's much, much greater than collisions. Um, so that, that's a clue, right? If we can find a way to collect the data on where near misses occur, where near near misses occur, then we can start to address this problem of figuring out where the problem spots are. So this is what LA Bike Map does. It collects the near misses, and it also collects <coughs> Uh, reports of theft. A lot of people don't report their bike stolen when it's stolen. Harassment. LAPD won't even take reports of this unless it's actually, unless they consider it assault. Road hazards. Well, there's no real good way to submit that. And uh, and actual collisions. You know, we know that collisions go underreported. We know that falls go underreported. All, everybody in this room has had a collision or a fall that they didn't report. So this is what LA Bike Map does. And, and so from sort of like from the insider, from the governmental perspective, this is its purpose. So um, if the internet cooperates, we're gonna, I'm gonna actually demo this for you. But this is a map, this is the map itself, um, screenshotted and put together over multiple screenshots. So you can kind of see what, this is, the, this is uh, all the collisions in 2008 plus a bunch of reports that we've received since. So this is sort of the most current bike data for LA and you can see that people are reporting some things that are outside the city of Los Angeles. But, that's kind of, I mean, I think it's a vivid illustration of the problem we face, right? I, I showed this map to somebody and they went out and got a helmet. I didn't say anything about it getting a helmet. I don't think that that's the number one way we can address bike safety, but she was just like, I'm getting a helmet. She went out and got one, because it's just like blood. It's just a big blood spatter. It's really gross, you know, um, across all of, all of LA. Um, so let me show you this. Good, Steven? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the actual bike map. And I can drag around in here. And we can go down here to Long Beach. I mean, if anybody's interested in Long Beach. And uh, we, can, we can zoom in and out. You see these different categories here? So this is everything that's been reported. Or the, so what we did is we preceded the map with all the data from 2008. But then since then, people have been reporting things. I think we've had about a report a day since we opened the map. And so there's these other categories. We can go into them and look at where are these, where are the, um, where are the different things in those categories. And there's even subcategories. Like if we go into collisions, we have it broken out by fatality, hit and run with severe injuries, hit and run with minor or no injuries, severe injuries, not a hit and run, and minor or no injuries, not a hit and run. It's like if we wanted to, Minor or no injuries, that's not a hit run. That's the most common. <coughs> we go here, it has to think a little bit, right? And then it pulls us up and it shows us all these circles. And what each circle says, so 43 means there are 43 in there. That, that represents 43 collisions. And the size of the dot changes with <coughs> the collisions that, are, that occurred there. So here's three, I know it's far away. Here's, this one doesn't have a number because it's just one. This is 23. Um, 23. Right there. Jordan, man. Some yeah. have much higher numbers, but it's the 112. Yeah. And that might actually, if you, um, we have a little bit of a geocoding problem. As with all data, there's some data that's not good. And anytime, what we do is, just to get a little technical for a second, we feed the, inter the, the intersection into, we feed the cross streets into Google Maps, and then Google Maps returns a latitude and longitude. That's how this works. 